Psalm 92. Today I want to share with you the order of flourishing in God's presence. The order. The order, as in like order of battle, like order of service. The order of flourishing in God's presence. Why do we talk about the order of flourishing in God's presence? Psalm 92 will tell us something about that. Psalm 92, Psalms 92 from verse 12 to 15. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. So the scripture is making further explanation, further, further explanation, elaborating on what it means to be righteous. is to be planted in the house of God. To be planted in the house of the Lord is not a physical thing. It's not, in, it's not a church going thing. It's not a church commitment thing. The house of God is primarily the spiritual experience. Belonging to God. Belonging to God. I just feel some compulsion to do some to say a few things about church. So when we say planted in the house of God, the origin of the house of God is God commanding Moses in the desert to make the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting. The tabernacle. Where the ark of the covenant was. The ark of the covenant was the revelation and the symbol. Are you listening to me? Please listen to me. The Ark of the Covenant was the symbol. A symbol means something standing for some other thing that is not seen. The Ark of the Covenant being something that was seen, but representing, standing in the place, announcing and revealing what was not seen, which is the presence of God. The Ark of the Covenant was the thing that made the tabernacle the tabernacle. And what, what was the reason for the tabernacle? Where God will meet. It's called the tent of meeting. Where God will meet with his people. And how will God meet with his people? His people will be assembled unto him. So the word church, let me do a little bit of ecclesiology. The word church, Kirk from Scottish and ancient Germanic ancient Germanic language is actually ecclesia in Greek. Ecclesia means those who are called out, those who are summoned, called out of something. That started in the Old Testament when God called people out of Egypt. And in the Old Testament it's called kahal. Kahal yave. The people called out so before we talk about the house of God, we first of all talk about the calling out. So the house of God becomes then the assembly of those who are called out. So when the scripture says those who are planted in the house of the Lord, first of all it means those who are called out of sin, those who are called out of darkness, those who are called out of the ways of the ancestors, those who are called out of the ways of the world, those who are called out of ancient rebellion, those who are called out from the ways of the father, like Abraham was called out. God is the God who calls out from Abraham to Jesus and to you and I. God calls out from Abraham to Paul to Peter. God calls out. So before we house the, have the house of God, we are God will plant people, the people to be planted in the house of God, are first of all, people called out, like Moses was drawn out of the waters. Like Egypt had to let go Israel because God called his son out of Egypt. 
like Abraham had to leave Haran, had to leave the Chaldean, had to leave the place of the father because God called him out and planted him in, the can in Canaan. So the flourishing place, Canaan, or the promised land, has always been the plan of God that he will call you out of other places and then plant you where he will have communion with you. His house, his promised land, the land that flows with milk and honey. Therefore, when we talk about being planted in the house of God, it's not primarily, oh, that a church in GFCC or the apostolic church or Methodist or Lutheran. No, it is first of all, the experience of being separated from darkness and being planted in God. And once you have gone through that process of being called out and being planted in God, and God becomes your life, becomes your culture, God becomes your system, God becomes your value, your value, and your culture, and your tradition, God becomes the definition of your relationship, God becomes the dictator, so to say, the dictator not in any negative way, dictator in the sense of dictating and directing, what happens in your life? What you do with your life, with your finances, with your children, with your marriage, with your health, as long as you live in that place of being called out and planted and God becoming your worldview and your system. The scripture says, because you are planted in the house of the Lord, you shall flourish where? In the courts. Just trying to let you know this. So you cannot say, but I've been going to church, why have I not flourished? Don't stay away from church. I am regular in every church activity. Are you planted in God? Are you planted in God? That's the issue. That's the issue. Those planted in the house of the Lord. They shall flourish in the course of our God. Verse 14. Because they are planted in the house of the Lord, they are seasonless. They are non-seasonal. You are not permitted not to grow flourishing. You don't grow old. You grow flourishing. Tell somebody I'm not growing old. I'm growing flourishing. Hallelujah. So now let's look at the order. There is an order. Because this flourishing thing is in the presence of God. This is what Psalm 92 is talking to us about. That when God is involved, if God is involved in the project of you flourishing, and by the way, flourishing is simply doing well, prospering, increasing, prospering, increasing, extending, overwhelmingly, exceedingly, and continually. It is sprouting. Like you plant something today, it sprouts. It is blooming. Like ugu. Like unkie. Like unkongubong. Blooming. Green. Lush. Wealthy. So the word flourish is the word be wealthy. Bloom. Sprout. Increase. It means in marriage, your marriage is green. You get married, people have been married before you, they get envious. They get to be envious of you because your marriage is like, you, it's like an annoyance to them. Re redefining the pleasure and the honor and the excellence of marriage. Business in every area. We are talking about flourishing in everything. We are talking about flourishing in everything. There is an order. So this flourishing in the divine presence, in the court of God, what is the order by which this flourishing takes place? What is the order? The order means the organization, the arrangement, the pattern, the structure, the setup. What structure of life? What setup of life? What organization of life? 
What arrangement of life? What systems of life? If you are listening to me, say, I'm listening. If you are listening to me, shout, Aleteya. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what is the order? Everything has order. Order precedes manifestation. Order. So you cannot have an order that is outside God's presence and then flourish by God. Sir, it is called insanity. So fasting and prayer does not cause you to flourish in God. Stop deceiving yourself. It is fasting and praying within the order of God. Absolutely. You must discover the order. The order of flourishing even in old age. That's my interest as a minister. To set it out. For myself first, I have to leave it. And then to bring it to you. Let's look at order. Let's look at the order. Before we look at the order of the flourishing life, let us see, let us have a, 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 a picture, a picture, a brief picture of the order of dying in the presence of God, of failing in the presence of God, of shame in the presence of God. The sons of Eli were cursed not outside the presence of God. They were cursed in the presence of God. The sons of Eli died in the presence of God. Eli died in the presence of God. Gehazi failed, did not take over from Elisha in the presence of God. He was, he was in the presence of God every day. He saw the chariots of fire on the mountain. This man saw miracles. This man saw wonder. In the, in the presence of God, he failed. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. Say something about the sons of Eli and why they died in battle the same day. And the wife of one of them died giving birth to a son and the son became Ichabod. I've been looking at the Bible. Every time I read, Ichabod is mentioned once. After that, Ichabod is silent forever. No place for Ichabod. Glory has departed. That was his beginning and his end. The next time Ichabod is mentioned in the Bible is nothing other than shame. And the Bible does not have enough place for shame. It's not a book of shame. Shame is mentioned in the process of talking about the glory of God. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. Say that now the sons of Eli were corrupt. Where were they corrupt? In the presence of the Lord. I love it how King James Version says it. Now the sons of Eli, give me that in King James. Come on, run with me. Come on, run with me. The sons of Eli were the sons of Belia and they knew not the Lord. They were in the presence of the Lord, but they knew not the Lord. Are they sons of Belia here? Are they daughters of Belia here? Why in the presence of the Lord, but they don't know the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, while you are in the presence of the Lord, you have no business with the flourishing agenda of the Lord. In fact, you are likely to perish before the Lord. Like Uzziah, who perished because of the ark. And these days people are fools, are preaching foolishness. Because there is liberty for everybody to have a say. Say God is not a consuming fire. God doesn't punish anybody. The only thing about God is mercy. The only thing about God is love. So where, do, what do, where does justice come from? Where does order come from? Where does righteousness come from? Righteousness means there is a distinction between righteousness and non-righteousness. And there are applications. God cannot be edited to accommodate people who just want to live how they like to live it. Now the sons of Eli, in the presence of the Lord, but they were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. In the, in the presence of the Lord, a minister not knowing the Lord, a leader not knowing the Lord. And the priest custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest servant would come with a three-pronged flesh, flesh hook. 
in his hand while the meat was boiling. Also before they burned the fat, the priest servants, the sons of Eli's servants would come and say to the man who sacrificed, give meat for roasting to the priest for he will not take boiled meat from you but, uh, but raw. Now Eli was very old and he heard everything his sons did. I am now reading verse 15. Now Eli was very, very old. I'm reading, I think it should be verse 22 or so. Yes, I read verse 12 to 13, then verse 15. Now I am verse 22. Now Eli was very old, and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel, and how they lay with women. They lay with women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. In the presence of the Lord, they were laying with women. And then read down. And God said, I will do something in Israel that will cause the ear of everyone who hears to tingle. In the presence of the Lord, they died. They, act, they died while the act of the Lord was there with them. They died. The act of the Lord, I told you, is the symbol of the presence of the Lord. They died in the face of the Lord. They died while the Lord washed. Order is what defines either glory or shame. Order. Which order? Rise to your feet. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce the order of death. I renounce the order of failure. I am not a son or daughter of Eli. I don't have Belial as my father. I refuse corruption. I refuse empty religiosity. I am not just a religious person. I am planted in God. God is my father. By the atoning work of Jesus Christ, I am washed. I am forgiven. I am saved. In that salvation, I accept to be planted in the house of God. I submit to the order of God. The order to flourish. No, shout it louder. I submit to the order of God. The order to flourish. The order to prosper. The order to increase. Say, I shall not perish in the, in the presence of the Lord. I shall flourish even in old age. In Jesus' name. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services. Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.